Okay, another episode of Profit Engines. This is a video story, and we're doing a video on video stories today because we have a lot of questions coming from our audience and a lot of the practitioners uh, in the medical side that we work with, and a lot of companies who are non-medical ask about how do we correctly identify the workings of a proper video strategy. And I'm going to go through just a couple of ideas. And what I want to get across is the simplicity of this in its earnest of being simple. Video really works when it has a hook. And the hook can be not necessarily an offer, but something unique within the video. So if you have an offer, that's great, but that's at the end. What we're trying to do is get a sort of a poke at what makes people make a sort of initial incarnation of watching a video. And that hook might actually be the title of the video. Uh, it might be action, where there's some action up front in the video. There might even be something that's uh, that's outside of the, like breaking the fourth wall of a video where someone basically steps away, comes back in, and this type of motion, especially in Facebook, really gets people to actually stop and look. So the critical components of getting that hook in, and that could also be, uh, again, within the play out of the video, but really we're, we're trying to think at the party, right? So we're not trying to do a selling routine in video. Selling is really the antithesis of not what you want to do in video. You really want to come across as authentic and have something of interest and educate. And at the end, then you can pivot your story to your offer or your strategy for what you're trying to get across as a uh, service or product. But what we really want to think about is starting to educate the customer with emotional detail, especially if you're uh, using uh, what we consider probably the most not even close, the strongest is testimonial, real testimonials. And they don't have to be professionally shot. They just need to tell the story of, let's say, someone's before and after. Very powerful because you're going to try and catch people when they're really kind of at that process mode of making a decision. And a lot of the testimonial videos work very well at the end of a process of educating uh, a consumer or a patient. Uh, what you think about this is the is your story or the story of, of you, meaning that your particular uh, problem or your, or your condition or whatever it might be that is um, why you would stop and watch the video, you have to think of that, that story and create, educate, and have an aha moment. So really, in a lot of the most uh, successful videos we've shot for some of our customers, there's an aha moment that goes through the process, and it might be some text overlay uh, to repeat the aha moment. That might be just a, a, a patient in a medical environment, you know, coming to, to the conclusion of, of treatment, and then you see a, a bright and shiny face. It might be uh, a product or a demonstration of uh, some sort of service that gets someone to, you know, be in a better situation after using the service or product, and really looking at what we call juxtaposition. So this juxtaposition is looking at the sort of other side of the story. So, we, you know, before and afters work very well because they tell a, a story in a short period of time. And it, there's some juxtaposition from where I started to where they ended. The same with services. Before and afters in services work well. And this is where we see sharing. So a lot of the times when we see videos getting sharing started, they've created an emotional tie down within the framework of the video. What you want to also do is have variants. So one of the things that's been working, especially for some of the folks that we've got who are really into trying to build their brand up, is using iPhone uh, and rough motion, which are interesting. So really being in the, having a, a, a iPhone or, an, uh, or a droid right up in front of their face and telling a story or talking about a news event or something that's going to basically cut the pattern. The, the pattern interrupt in Facebook is something different that is not commercial-based, TV-based. People want to see things that are going to create something that stops their thumb from going like this, right? 
And we also want to think about alternatives. Okay, alternatives are really looking at some of the things that make sense in gender variations, age variations, and demo variations. So we can we can do male or female, right? So people that identify with different types of genders. We can change age ranges so that we can hit different age populations. We can do the older, younger, middle-aged, so that you have different variants um, or alternatives in your video strategy. And then demo. Again, so your demographic might be completely different. There might be some elements of luxury or elements of non-luxury related to the demographic. So there's there's great ways to do alternatives, and that's really your, your sort of question mark factor is how many videos you want to do in this whole process of, again, having sort of like a center post uh, emotional-based video, some variants, and then some alternatives based off of these different quadrants. But of all things you really want to think about is the strategy of the journey of the customer, or in some cases with medical, it's the journey of a patient. But the journey of a customer, we want to use this acronym of HEART. So if you think of the customer's heart, what's going to change them from being unaware to aware and taking action? So if we, so we start with H. We want to think that the H really is the unknown. And I call it heedless, right? So they're very almost neglecting whatever issue they might have or whatever problem they're trying to solve. They're neglecting it and it's oblivious to them, right? So they're not in the awareness stage yet. Once you hit them with um, a video or a piece of content, right, you're taking them next to being eager. So now that they've seen something that's of interest and they're aware, right, you now get them into eager. Now they're going to start their information hunting and gathering and they're going to go across Google and, and figure out, you know, what is this problem that I just got aware of and now I have to think through it and, and gather my data, right? So again, these are all steps you can do in the video production and start to get those pieces of elements through it. Next would be A, and that's the answer. So they've come through the informational gathering stage. They've now found multiple solutions or multiple conclusions to it, and they have an answer, right? So they have an answer, and this is where it becomes important. And R is the resolution of logical and emotional connection decision towards your solution, right? So this is this is the key component, which is if you are doing these videos, you get them aware, you get them then eager, and then you give them sort of what, again, the answer to the question. And you can, you can pretty much guarantee that people are going to go bouncing back and forth between your solution and other solutions. But if you give them a final resolution on your um, service or your product, now you've got an opportunity to get them. And then finally, we go to T, which is our offer or our tie down. Um, sometimes it's a transaction or a um, appointment. And that is when you've got them closed and you've given them an offer and they've taken action, right? Taking action, tie down, transaction, they're getting the offer. So really you're taking them through completely unaware from a headless standpoint or, or heedless standpoint. There's no idea of this situation, oblivious to all the way through to a transaction, tie down or an offer. So I hope this helps. Uh, think about this in your video strategy and we'll see you in the next episode.